Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here to the first Sunday in January of 2022, year of our Lord, day of our Lord, moment of our Lord, as the Lord makes an imprint on our lives and we see his mighty hand at work in many and very different ways. Today we'll also be celebrating communion. If you are joining us via the media system uh, during the announcements here, if you would like to go to your kitchen or wherever and get a juice of some sort or a cracker, uh, it does not have to be, you know, I've heard already where they've used uh, Doritos and, and Coca-Cola. But whatever it is, it's not so much the the elements, what their material have made, they're made of, but what the meaning is behind you partaking of the fellowship in the communion service. So that will be part of our service this morning. As a reminder, annual reports are to be given to Sue Hess. And also coming up on uh, Monday, January the 10th, at 6.30 is a leadership meeting. On Sunday the 23rd, we'll have a representative here from the Expectations Women's Center as they will be bringing forth a message and also to give us reports on, on the work that they're doing in a much needed area of life, the life of unborn children and helping in the lives of those individuals, those parents that choose life in however they may, whatever they may need. Also, on uh, February, the uh, as we switch over now into February, uh, February the 15th will be a congregation meeting here. Hey, Ron. That, yes. That may change. That's what the, the Bible state, but Susan has a conflict. On okay. Evening. So it's a leadership meeting on the 10th. We'll talk about either an overhead person to take minutes or maybe move it to me. Well, that, that's tentative, that may change. Okay, mm -hmm. so that meeting date is tentative, subject to change to be announced. But we'll still keep announcing yeah. that particular meeting up and coming. Also, on the 27th of February, we'll be uh, having the Kingdom Kids here and their worship served during the worship service and I would encourage if you know of children children of all ages out into the community uh, uh, be a part of spreading the, the good news and the word that uh, this program is coming it's a good program puts it down into how we can understand even us as adults so they will be here that morning also we continue with the wise gift cards and also, uh, we have some, in January, we have one individual from Country Comfort who's listed there in the, the bulletin. Any other announcements? No? All right, seeing none. Let's turn our attention to the reason that we've assembled here this morning. And I, I'll share here with you in a little bit, but the things have changed. All right, responsive reading this morning is found on 118 in our hymnals, and I don't know if, uh, uh, how it's being portrayed there, but we'll, I'll lead, lead off, and then you will continue with the next phrase, and we'll do that the whole way down through. All right, stand if you are able as we uh, read number 118, to whom our praise is due. Praise the Lord for the sunshine. Praise, Praise the Lord for rain. Praise the Lord for pleasure. Praise the Lord for pain. Praise the Lord for lessons learned. To every joy and sorrow. Praise the Lord for days gone by. For each new tomorrow. Praise God. Our hymn this morning is number 164. We three kings of Orient are.
And Lord, you know the recesses, the recesses of, the, of our heart. May we bring glory and honor to you as we pause to worship you and give you thanks, both through the spoken message, through song and word. And Lord, we look forward to the time here when we can join you in fellowship through the communion table. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in the lives of your people. Be with us now, I pray. Amen. You may be seated. This is the children's time.
telling me on Facebook or whatever that thing is <laughs> that all of these people were were so fearful of these noises. Some come up with the idea that maybe we've been attacked by a foreign adversary. Or maybe it was some sort of homegrown domestic opportunists to take advantage of the first of the year. Some claim it may have been meteorites that have fallen to earth. My first thought was the world, world the, other, the war of the worlds that came across the radio in, I think it was 1935 or 40, where the entire world was mesmerized by this radio broadcast show that they thought the Martians had landed. Maybe that's what happened. If you heard that, I wonder what you thought first. Of course, I thought of the war of the, world, the worlds first, but then something came across in my spirit. And this was early this morning. God laid this on my heart. I have had no time for preparation for this morning's message. This is a message that God gave me this morning. I have been never so excited to give a message this morning. I first started leafing through some things and checking some scriptures. I said, well, you know, well, this will be a good message for next week. I'll be ahead of the game. But then there was a check in my spirit. It welled up inside of me. God said, no, today is the day for this message. If you may think that I sound a little bit excited or animated, yeah, I am. Because out of the innermost being will flow rivers of living water. The Holy Spirit is alive. And there's a message that comes forth today that we need to hear. That whoever is listening via the media system or who is here this morning in the pews, we need to hear this message. Or maybe it's just for me. The world trembles and they want to know what's happening when something traumatic takes place. Several years ago there was a meteor shower that flew over Union County. It was 10 o'clock at night, the phone rang. One of my customers says, you need to come out here because this furnace is booming. And I said, well, you know, do you, is it running now? Yeah. Well, I'll be over in the morning. Ten minutes later, he called back and said, uh, you don't need to come over. The neighbor called and asked me if I heard the, the meteor shower go over, the sonic boom. All noises that happen in the house are always coming from the heating system. Am I right, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> Even though they might be from outside. So whatever happened, <clears throat> last evening this is what came to mind and it comes from the great book of Romans Romans chapter 8 <clears throat> for I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us revealed in us for their earnest expectations of creation eagerly wait for for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation, for the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in, it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole of creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. You see, because of the fall of man back in the, in the Garden of Eden, even creation awaits the redemption of the second coming of Christ. The world should be looking for that. And the passage of scripture that came to mind this morning comes from the book of 
Matthew 24, which was read here this morning. The disciples came out of the, the, of the uh, they're at the temple, they're at the Mount of Olives. And they said, you know, when will these signs of the times be? The end of the, when's all this going to take place, Jesus? And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceive you. For many will come in my name. By golly, there is a lot of individuals out there who are proclaiming the, say they are proclaiming the gospel. <laughs> and they are not. They are deceiving the whole world. Individuals that think God is our government. Mm. God is a human being that, that stands at a podium or a platform and spews out deception and lies. Do not be deceived, church. <clears throat> Jesus said, I am the way. Oh, yeah. I am the truth. That's right. And he is the life. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to turn back to those foundational roots that Jesus was telling his disciples not to be deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am Christ and will be deceiving many. In the book of Revelation, at the fall of Babylon, the small and the great, individuals of wealth who were worshipped at the Isle of Baal, <coughs> involved in sorceries. Now, when we think of sorceries, we think of you know witchcraft and all that evilness. But in that passage of scripture in Revelation, the word sorceries is also for the word pharmakia. It means drugs. The world has been lured into a drug stupor. Mm. For all these things, excuse me, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Jesus told his disciples and he's telling us, see that you are not troubled. For all of these things must come to pass. And it's very important, last few words that he says, for all these things must come to pass, but little word, but the end is not yet. You will hear there will be famines, pestilence. That's what we're going through now. We're going through pestilence. There will be earthquakes in various places. Places who've never had earthquakes will have earthquakes and storms and all of these things. Are, these things are happening. Yes, they are. Well, Scripture tells us they're like birth pangs. For you ladies who have given birth to children, you know that those first couple of um, um, oh, there's something going to happen. But then when it comes down to the, to the actual procedure of giving birth, the anguish of pain is an individual once said, if you want to compare it to something, try grabbing a hold of your lower lip and pulling it over your, up, your head. <laughs> The excruciating pain. But then comes joy. That's right. Then comes that little one. Then comes that life into your life. These are but the beginning of sorrows. All these things are but the beginning. And then Jesus also offers up some words of encouragement. He's saying, because, because you follow me, they're going to, uh, you know, they'll deliver you up before the, uh, before the councils, before the laws, before the courts. Matthew, or excuse me, Mark puts it this way. Mark parallels the same passage of Scripture. Well, watch out for yourselves. They will deliver you up to councils. They will, you will be beaten in the synagogues by the religious folks. Of course, Mark is addressing to the church of Rome and Rome 
I always call him immediate mark. He doesn't cut, he doesn't go beating around the bush. He puts the laser right out there quick. You will be brought before the rulers and the kings for my sake. For a testimony to them. You see, when you get carried in, cur cornered by some of these individuals who want to be, you know, challenge you in your faith, you have the grandest opportunity to give testimony as to what God has done in your life and what God can do in their lives. And that there is no other salvation found other anywhere else but in Christ Jesus. Whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that resides in the lives of, inside of us as believers. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the comforter. That which resides inside the power of the Holy Spirit. And that same power that rolled away the stone from the resurrection tomb and, she, and Jesus walked out. That's power. And sometimes we just shackle it so much because we're afraid. Mark goes on to say that your brother will betray brother. Even to the death and father against his child, children. Children will rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But again, words of encouragement from the Lord Jesus Christ is, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. When you hear the sonic boom, when you hear this earthquakes, when you see all of this unfolding, which direction do we look? Do we look up thinking that the trump of God is going to sound and we're out of here? Are we not looking to God for all the stuff that's going on in our lives? We should. I should. But it's too easy to get drawn into to, you know, all that's happening. In, in the world, in, in, our, in our local news, in our, our national, national news, it's too easy to get sucked into all of that. And you sit there and you realize there's not a that young thing you can do about it. You know why? All of these things that are unfolding before our very eyes is all a part of God's plan. Mm -hmm. He's got this. It's like a, a, a million part jigsaw puzzle. It's all, how many, I know somebody had 2,000, and I know somebody else puts jigsaw puzzles together. And they sort of, oh, I don't want to do 1,000, that takes too long. Imagine God putting all these pieces together. And it's coming about. Mm -hmm. Soon that grand and glorious picture will be complete. God's plan of protection for the saints of God will indeed be fulfilled. Are we not looking to the sky? Are we not looking for our redemption to come from the Lord Jesus Christ? The Apostle Paul says to the church there in Thessalonica, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. In other words, Paul is saying, Church, go about being the Father's business. The same thing that Jesus told all of his, those disciples, or excuse me, all those uh, rulers in the synagogue. Mom and dad asking us, Mary and Joseph, asking to, you know, what are you doing here? And I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. He said, I'm about the Father's business. And so should we. We have the grandest opportunity and privilege to be able to share the most precious gift to mankind, Jesus, and the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the redemption of our sins. That's what Paul is telling the church there at Thessalonica. I don't need to tell you all this stuff because you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief of the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, 
the whole world is looking for peace and safety. But the peace and safety can only come when you know the Prince of Peace. Wonderful Counselor. Prince of Peace. Jesus. Then some destruction shall come. It's come upon them. You see, folks will say, well, ask, well, you know, the disciples asked Jesus, you know, just prior to his ascension, said, now, Lord, are you going to, you know, have the kingdom of God established? In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus there says, oh, by the way, I hope you're following along. Because of far too many churches across this nation, you don't hear these words. Open your Bibles. Mm. Follow along. We've been in the last days, just before Jesus ascended. In Timothy, we hear of the apostasy, the turning away from God. All of those things that are unfolding right before our very eyes. Also, we should be watching Israel. Israel is God's timepiece. The things that are happening there give us glimpses and of what's to come. We know what's to come. There's two ways out of this world. We're either going to die or we're going to fly. But Jesus here is telling his disciples and he's telling us we need not to be troubled. We need not to be concerned about our eternal destination provided our reservation is secure. How many of us have ever gotten on an airplane and said, I have a reservation. This is my seat over here. It's like the evangelistic preacher that said was preaching in a small country church and he kept saying to the congregation, do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. Everybody in the church raised their hand except for this one little boy. He said up front, he said, do you want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. The preacher come down off the pulpit and walked over to the little boy and he said, son, don't you want to go to heaven? Yeah, but you look like you're getting a busload now. <laughs> Sometimes we need to refocus on what's important in life. No one knows when the time will call, when we'll, we'll be called on. Of all the stuff that's going on, all the things. That, that are unfolding both locally, nationally, and universally. We need to pay attention. And we need to be about the Father's business. First of all, we need to make sure that our reservation is secure. That we have God's protective system in place. The GPS. You see, God has taken care of people throughout the generations. And there's coming a time when the trumpet of God will sound and the dead in Christ shall rise. The Apostle Paul puts it in Corinthians 15. We shall all be changed. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Isaiah 60 and 6 puts it this way, speaking of the second coming. <coughs> the multitude of camels shall cover the land, your land. The dominaries of Midian and Ephraim, all from, Sh from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and they shall proclaim praises of the Lord. Gold and frankincense. 
You see that when the Magi showed up, now this is a little bit from what I was going to tell you. They brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That's where we get we three kings. But there was more than that. But at the second coming of Christ, it will just be gold and frankincense. Gold speaks of the birth of our Savior. Frankincense is a fragrant. This is the fragrance of God. In the, in the temple, the, at the altar of incense, they would put stuff on the, on the coals of fire, which would make smoke. Sweet air was going up was the prayers of the people. You see, what's miss, going to be missing there at the second coming of Christ is myrrh. Myrrh is picturesque of death. There be no death when Christ comes again. When Christ establishes his kingdom. And we need not to be dis deceived. We need not to live in fear. We need, because greater is he that is in me and in you than he that is in the world. Amen. We've got hope that's out of this world. I'm independently wealthy. My father owns it all. Isn't that great? That's the message. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't shut it off. I couldn't wait another one out. We do for next week. I, can't, I couldn't. I take that passage of scripture seriously. This says, you know, you need not to worry what to say because the Spirit of God will tell you what to speak. And I hope this, this is not me speaking, but a message from God. And we need to draw near to Him. We need fellowship with Him. We need to share His love with those around us. And as we gather together this morning, as we sing our hymn, turn your eyes upon Jesus, will our agony come? As we join in fellowship, anticipating God's promise. of your children as to whether they've accepted the Lord and are able to take the elements.
Master, request the honor of your presence at a table, a dinner prepared in his honor. You may be seated. This is one of the most moving times for me because that passage of scripture that Jesus says to his disciples and you and I, as he says, I will not eat it anew till I eat it and drink it with you in the kingdom to come. There's coming a time when we'll sit around the table in, pre in the presence of Jesus and partake of the fellowship of the bread and the cup. Hard to fathom, but praise God that it is. We now have a, a blessing for the bread, please. Let us pray. Dear Father, as I was preparing the things for your table today, I ask each one of us to look in their hearts and believe and to know why we are doing this. We do this in honor of you. Mm -hmm. We take this bread for your body, Lord, that was given for our sins and that we shall have eternal life with you if we believe all this. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Corinth concerning the elements. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the name of Jesus, we remember his death on the cross. Well, now I have a prayer for the elements of the Jews. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come together and <coughs> share this cup that represents your blood that was shed for us, help us to remember that we, because of these, may have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Help us to grow daily in prayer and praise in your name. Please let the light shine that is in us to others all mm. around us so that all may enjoy the glory of your kingdom and the promises and the sacrifices that have been given to us through your shed blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the same way, 
also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as you often drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The element of the wine or the juice is symbolic of the poured out crimson blood of Jesus Christ for my sins, your sins, and the sins of the entire world. It's hard to fathom that. That he went to the cross for people who are not yet born. And yet he paid the price out of love. Do this in remembrance of him. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you knowing that you are always there. We don't get put on a, a list of, of weight. We don't hear angel harps playing music. We have a direct line through you. And Lord, you know all of the situations that are unfolding this day. And we would ask that you would continue to watch over us as we seek to serve you wherever it is you have placed us. And Lord, we thank you for your outpouring of love for Calvary, for the entire world, through love. Lord, be with us now. Amen. Stand as we sing our closing hymn. He lives. Does he live in your heart this morning? Yes. Amen. Amen. Number 264.
than to say he lives in the hearts of the lives of his believers. Lord, be with us as we go from beyond this, this meeting house to wherever it is you place us, that we can share the glory that you live, you're alive, and you wish for all to come to you. Be with us until we meet again or until we see you in the air. Lord, we thank you. And all of God's people who said, know that he lives in their hearts. Say amen. 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 amen.